Uh, Senator Merkley. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to all for your, for your information. Uh, Assistant Secretary Salisis, if I understood your earlier comment, you thought the quick reaction team was only for reinforcing assistance to those members of the National Guard providing traffic control. Did I hear your comment correctly? Yes, Senator, you did. Uh, thank, thank you. Uh, Major General Walker, I, I believe that if I heard your comments correctly, that quick reaction team was there to respond as needed, including protection of the Capitol. Is, is that correct? No, Senator. So they were actually to provide support to the guardsmen out there. What I would have wanted to do was remission them and get them to the Capitol immediately as a quick reaction force. I see. So they weren't necessarily planned to help protect the Capitol, but you would reassign them to that in that type of emergency? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, thank you for that clarification. Uh, I was really struck by the complexity of the chain of command for trying to get a decision for response. It starts with the Capitol Police Board, which goes to the Chief of the Capitol Police, Stephen Sund, who goes to the Commanding General of the D.C. National Guard, who goes to the Secretary of Army, who then consults with, with uh, people within Department of Army about whether it's appropriate, which then goes to the Secretary of Defense, who then consults Christopher Miller to decide to uh, study that, who then gives an order back to the Commanding General of the D.C. National Guard. Uh, this uh, six-step process uh, seems totally unsuited to the situation of responding quickly to an emergency. And just wanted to ask you, uh, Commander Walker, uh, if, if I'm reading this chain of command correctly, and if, if, do you share the view that this is way too complex for a moment when you need to respond quickly? So, Senator, it's a long-standing process, but it, it can work in minutes. So, for example, during the first week of June, the Secretary of the Army was with me. I watched him call the Secretary of Defense and consult with the Attorney General and respond back to me with a approval within minutes. So, so it's, it's an elaborate process, uh, but it doesn't always have to be when in extremist circumstances, we can get it done over the phone but if, very, if, very quickly. If I understand right, it's normally an elaborate process done in advance. And in fact, the uh, information came to you on January 1st. Uh, you got back a response on January 5th. So this was before January 6th. But it had this provision that this restriction that I think you've testified to was unusual that required reconsultation on January 6th in a fashion that deeply inhibited the ability to move quickly. That, that's right, Senator. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you. I wanted to uh, uh, turn uh, to uh, uh, Undersecretary Smyslova. And you've been with the department for, for how long? Uh, 17 years, sir. For 17 years. And I think you were the Deputy Undersecretary on January 6th. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I was... Uh, uh, struck by different reports that came from officials saying that there was a, a mood within the department, and I'll just quote one uh, formal official report, quote, nobody wanted to write a formal intelligence report about this in part of the fear that such a report would be very poorly received by the MAGA folks within DHS. And to follow this up, uh, Brian Murphy, former head of DHS, and I don't know, were you also the deputy to him as well? I was one of his deputies, yes, sir. Uh, he noted that DHS officials had ordered him to stay away from the threat of white nationalism, that Chad Wolf and Ken Cuccinelli uh, also had asked him to modify intel assessments to ensure that they matched up with public comments by President Trump to downplay, downplay the threat posed by white supremacists. In your time at DHS, it's very important that intelligence is unaffected by politics. It's like the root information. Did you get a sense 
that there was kind of a troubling cloud uh, as reported in various sources, including from the, the former head of DHS, that there was this troubling cloud of political influence over the quality or the kind of determination of how intelligence was prevented, presented to, to officials. Um, I can say that INA's reports did not change. We did not change our assessments based on any political pressure or interference. We did publish the Homeland Threat Assessment uh, it's a publicly available document that does state that white supremacists are the most persistent and legal threat uh, and lethal threat to the homeland. So did you ever feel any pressure or receive any uh, encouragement, even kind of in a less informal way, I'm not talking about a written document, that you needed to be very careful about clarifying the threat posed by white extremists? I did not personally receive that. And pressure. do you consider Brian Murphy's uh, report that that type of pressure was applied to be accurate or inaccurate? Um, he has, uh, his is a whistleblower complaint and it is still being adjudicated. No, I understand, but I'm asking you, you were right there in the, the, the leadership. You never got a sense that there was any type of political influence like he reported uh, regarding uh, encouragement to downplay. I did, not, I did not personally have that influence pushed upon me, sir. Okay, thank you. Some have suggested that the reason that there were formal uh, intelligence uh, assessments uh, regarding earlier events, including the protests in Portland, but not uh, such a, a detailed uh, presentation related to January 6, was because of this pressure to downplay to some degree the threat posed by white extremists. I would like to point out, sir, that the two instances are very different. Our support during some of the civil unrest and the protests, specifically in Portland, were at the direct request of our own DHS federal law enforcement partners. And in that capacity, we were reacting to a pattern of violence that had shown itself for several weeks. Our open source team did an excellent job in many instances of providing specific information that kept those officers safe. They were reporting things like bricks may be used today as a weapon, another day it might be bug spray combined with leaf blowers or lasers. Our work, um, by contrast, leading up to the election and January 6 is quite different. It's a different kind of an environment. There's not that pattern of uh, violence. It is a different kind of assessment. So I do suggest, sir, that it's, it's impossible to compare the two. Uh, thank you for your, your testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, or Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator.